Today, we embark on a journey into the intricate world of financial markets, where a seismic shift is underway, one that has the potential to catalyze the long-awaited AMC squeeze. Our narrative begins with the enigmatic workings of the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, and their relationship with what has been colloquially referred to as the Do Not Investigate list. Over time, whispers and speculations about this list have swirled in the shadows, with many considering it a mere conspiracy theory. However, recent events have cast a spotlight on this cryptic phenomenon, revealing it to be more than just conjecture. Hey, welcome to ANC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. In a tweet that reverberated across the financial sphere, Bull Meacham boldly declared the existence of the SEC's Do Not Investigate list, lending credence to what was once shrouded in doubt. He dropped a bombshell by divulging that MEMX, Members Exchange, had received exemptions from the SEC, even though there was no documented evidence of these exemptions. It was a revelation that left the industry aghast. To add further intrigue, MDMDEX and the SEC publicly acknowledged their practice of granting anonymous access and engaging in market access violations on a daily basis. This startling revelation led to a cascade of questions. For years, there had been murmurs about the SEC's cozy relationship with hedge funds, with allegations that they selectively pursued smaller players while turning a blind eye to the indiscretions of industry giants. The existence of a list of specific firms, individuals, or companies that the SEC refrains from investigating had been a subject of speculation. Could political donations be a driving force behind these decisions? The answers remained elusive, buried beneath layers of secrecy. Dade Murphy, in a tweet dating back to 2008, took us further down the rabbit hole. He referenced Patrick Byrne, the former CEO of Overstock, who made astonishing claims about a fax machine nestled in the heart of CNBC's offices. This seemingly innocuous device, according to Byrne, served as a conduit for hedge funds to transmit their daily instructions to journalists, who obediently danced to their tune. The revelation exposed a disconcerting nexus between mainstream media and hedge funds, where criticism of entities like Citadel and Virtu was conspicuously absent. Jim Cramer's candid remarks in a video added another layer of intrigue. He confessed of his reluctance to speak ill of Citadel, a statement that raised eyebrows and suggested a sinister undercurrent. Patrick Byrne's testimony further corroborated these suspicions, shedding light on the existence of a fax machine that seemed to orchestrate the media narrative. Both Byrne and Kramer found themselves vilified as conspiracy theorists, a tactic that closely mirrored the mainstream media's treatment of AMC enthusiasts. Over the years, a litany of lawsuits laid bare the existence of synthetic shares, with hedge funds and market makers openly admitting their creation. Astonishingly, they merely paid fines as penance, admitting guilt while accepting waivers and consents. This leniency was underpinned by the belief that the SEC would never investigate them, a notion reinforced by Boss Blunts. He pointed out that the SEC had knowledge of naked shorting for decades, a fact confirmed by transcripts from a 2008 hearing. The SEC even acknowledged that electronic net settlement had ushered in a particularly manipulative form of fraud known as naked short selling. However, they appeared to be doing nothing to curb this practice. Fast forward 15 years, and electronic net settlement still prevails, churning out synthetic shares with alarming ease on a T plus 2 basis. The reluctance to investigate can be traced back to the SEC's directives to target small players while leaving market giants unscathed. It was an unsettling state of affairs that persisted for far too long. But then, a glimmer of hope emerged. The SEC took to Twitter to announce a momentous development. They were filing charges against Virtu Americas LLC, a broker dealer, and its parent company, Virtu Financial Incorporated. 
The charge is centered on allegations of materially false and misleading statements regarding information barriers meant to safeguard sensitive customer data. It was a revelation that sent shockwaves through the financial landscape, signifying a potential upheaval in the status quo. Dave Lauer's tweet added more fuel to the fire. He disclosed that Virtu was in hot water for failing to maintain information barriers, which had led to proprietary trading desks gaining access to institutional trading data. This wasn't just another regulatory enforcement action with a slap on the wrist. It was a full-blown court case. Even more damning were the allegations against Doug Sifu, suggesting that he had purposefully disseminated false information in public statements and client emails, mirroring Ken Griffin's infamous congressional testimony. Crucially, the SEC contended that Virtu had profited from these actions, potentially requiring them to disgorge ill-gotten gains rather than merely paying a nominal fine. The ramifications were immediate, as institutional investors likely began reconsidering their ties with Virtu. The prospect of Virtu paying not just a small fine but potentially billions in restitution sent shockwaves through the industry. Virtu was in damage control mode as institutional investors contemplated diverting their business elsewhere. The specter of losing all its customers loomed large, and Virtu's stock tumbled by 22% over the past year, with a 7% drop in a single day. The once mighty Virtu appeared to be on the precipice of a financial precipice. Now let's dissect the heart of the matter. What was Virtu being sued for, and why were they accused of trading ahead of their own customers and even selling their customers' proprietary information? Reports surfaced that Virtu maintained a database accessible to its employees, granting them access to trade information. This allowed them to effectively front-run their clients, an egregious breach of trust. To compound matters, Virtu's affiliates and other customers could purchase access to this database, creating a tangled web of unethical practices. Virtu was essentially charging some customers to front-run others a revelation that sent shockwaves through the industry. The implications extended beyond abandonment. Clients who discovered that their trade data and secrets were being sold had every reason to sever ties and advocate for Virtu's demise. Perhaps the most crucial aspect was that Virtu's actions were now the subject of a full-blown court case, not a mere regulatory fine. The potential requirement to repay every ill-gotten penny sent shivers down the spine of Virtu's leadership. The consequences were evident in the form of a significant decline in Virtu's stock value. The once mighty have been humbled, and the impact rippled through the industry. This development raises a poignant question. What comes next? With Virtu teetering on the brink of upheaval, attention inevitably turns to Citadel, a financial giant embroiled in similar controversies, trading ahead of its own clients. Curiously, the media narrative surrounding Citadel's role in the GameStop and Robinhood saga largely sidesteps these transgressions. However, a close examination of an investigation report revealed startling similarities between Citadel's actions and those of Virtu. Both seem to have engaged in practices tantamount to front-running their own customers. The SEC's pursuit of Virtu establishes a precedent that could soon extend to Citadel, potentially resulting in the dissolution of both entities. Such an outcome would have profound implications for the AMC squeeze, bringing it closer to realization. In conclusion, the unfolding events surrounding the SEC's actions against Virtu have cast a spotlight on a cryptic world where accountability was once elusive. The Do Not Investigate list may be losing its grip as regulators show newfound determination to hold market players accountable for their actions. Virtu's predicament serves as a stark warning to others engaged in unethical practices, with potential repercussions extending far beyond regulatory fines. As the specter of regulatory scrutiny looms large over Citadel, the possibility of systemic change in the financial landscape comes into focus. The fate of AMC and the broader market may very well hang in the balance, making this a narrative of immense significance, one that could reshape the financial world as we know it. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? 
Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.